Hello, my name is Ms. Maycutt, and I teach AP Environmental Science at Ballard High School. I'll be presenting some of the important tips for designing an investigation as part two of our How To FRQ series in preparation for the AP exam. Just to recap, the AP exam for this year has two free response questions. The first one will be designing an investigation, and that's the focus of our presentation today. This page is just a summary from the College Board website. A couple things to note, you could be um, we'll be presenting an authentic environmental scenario. That's the main focus. You'll be given visual representations, data, or models that you need to be able to describe and interpret. You need to be able to analyze the data. Um, also, there's no credit for basic definitions. The focus is on how to get different concepts or process to interrelate and apply to the environmental scenario given. To do this, you need to be ready to address the following how to write concise and clear investigative questions or hypothesis, identify specific variables in an experiment and the controls, how to design methodology, collect quantifiable data, present the data, interpret graphs. You need to be able to address how alternate conditions might alter your results, and of course, provide explanation and analysis. So let's begin at the beginning with a hypothesis. In your hypothesis or prediction, you must identify the relationship between dependent and independent variables. Your experiment, of course, must be testable and realistic. In addition, it should be specific and address the prompt. Be attentive to that, that you are answering the prompt question. Coming up with a great hypothesis that doesn't actually answer the question would do you no good. You can also earn credit for including a null hypothesis. So let's take a look at a few statements and that and how we might be able to improve them. What we have here, pollutants from coal burning facilities harm the ecology, open pit landfills will impact the health of local residents, and cathodes produce high levels of nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus. So what's wrong with these statements? Well, the first two are not specific or testable, and the second one it doesn't provide a relationship. So how can we improve them? Here are a few ways that you could rephrase these statements. Now, notice the statements one and two now define measurable and quantifiable variables. Now let's look at statement three. Here we can see a relationship between nutrients from CAFOs altering the quality of nearby surface water. And let's not forget the null hypothesis. If you choose to add one, just know the null hypothesis is a statement of no significance between the variables being tested. Using our CAFO example from earlier, the null hypothesis would state the surface water near the CAFOs would show, comparatively, no significant increase in the nutrients. Now, we said in your prediction, you have to define the relationship between independent and dependent variables, but what are all these variables? What's a control? And what are you controlling and the experiment with all your variables? So let's dig into this a bit. Your independent variable is what you are changing within the experiment, the treatment you apply. The dependent variable is what you're going to measure in response. When graphing, or if you're given a graph, remember, mix dry for your variables. The manipulated or independent variable will always be on the x-axis, while the dependent responding variable will always be on the y-axis. And don't forget your control groups or your control variables. The control group will be the group that does not have any conditions changed or controlled, and the controlled variables are all the various conditions of the experiment that are kept the same across every treatment you apply. Let's try it out. Here's a statement, um, and what I want you to do is identify all the variables they have in this lab. So scientists design a laboratory experiment in which they inject different concentrations of carbon dioxide into saltwater tanks containing calcium carbonate shells. The tanks are kept at the same constant temperature. After several days, the scientists measured the pH of the saltwater tanks and observed its effects on the calcium carbonate shells. So what are the independent and dependent variables and the likely controls they kept the same? Ready? 
The independent variable is, of course, concentrations of carbon dioxide, whereas the dependent variable will be the pH of the saltwater tanks and the qualitative effects observed on the calcium carbonate shells. The controlled variables they informed us of were the constant temperature. They likely also kept tank size and original saltwater types of shells the same across their different experimental groups. Next up, methodology. Be prepared to provide specifics in your methodology. You need to state what you'll actually do while also being brief and to the point. Make sure you include at least three experimental groups and one control group. Keep them brief. Identify the organisms or materials and equipment that you're using. Describe how you'll actually collect and record data, graph, analyze it, and be able to define a conclusion from your results. Remember, your experiment needs to be at least based in reality, theoretically possible. You could have the most detailed, precise experimental design, but if you don't address the prompt and if it isn't feasible in the real world, it will not get you credit. Let's practice. Here's an example. What is a measure you could use to determine if sewage is present in surface waterways? Hmm. How about a water quality test? or fecal coliform in the groundwater and odor near the waste treatment facility. Actually, none of these are specific or accurate measures for the prompt. A, water quality test is not a specific measure and fecal coliform in the groundwater and odor nearby don't actually address the prompt about surface water. Tests that would actually give evidence of sewage in surface water would be fecal coliform test of surface water, bacteria tests for disease-causing organisms, dissolved oxygen, or biological oxygen demand. Now it's your turn to come up with a few of these. Here is a scenario. What is the likely scientific question being asked? Scientists are interested in how the severity of acid deposition affects the soil of the red spruce forests. They design a laboratory experiment in which rainwater of different pH values is used to water soil samples taken from the red spruce forest. The soil samples are the same size, contain the same ratio of sand, silt, and clay. The same amount of water is sprayed on the soil samples every day for a week. Throughout the experiment, the scientists measured the concentration of toxic forms of aluminum in the soil samples. Now, Identify the independent and dependent variables will help you set up your scientific question. Ready? The independent variable was rainwater pH. Dependent variable, concentrations of toxic forms of aluminum in the soil that they measured. A possible question that you could come up with then is does the pH level of rainwater affect concentrations of toxic forms of aluminum in red spruce forest soils? There's other options, but that's just a great example. I mentioned earlier that the exam will sometimes choose to alter one of the conditions of the experiment. In this case, what if we had a different parent rock for the formation of our soils? What if there was more limestone? You could say, hmm, limestone will increase pH, but you have to ask yourself, is that answer specific and address all the prompts? Not quite. Let's see if we can do better. Here's some alternate answers that are more specific and complete. Each one addresses the relationship of how the limestone alters the results and addressing what the original conditions would be and how the secondary conditions are different. They also show understanding of how the process occurs. Here's a quick one. Remember your mixed dry? What are the independent and dependent variables in this graph? Ready? How about distance downstream and dissolved oxygen? Are those good answers? We can get a lot more specific, I think. Let's make the independent variable the distance downstream from sewage spill in kilometers where the water sample was taken and responding concentration of dissolved oxygen. Now, could you get away with the other answers? Maybe. But do you want to chance it? If you can add succinct and concise clarification, do so. Just remember to keep an eye on the time as you do. Here's another one. 
In this scenario, what's a scientific question that ecologists could use to guide their physical control efforts in the experiment? I'll let you read it on your own. While you do, think about what can the scientists control in this setting and what outcomes can they measure? Need another minute? In this scenario, the scientists can physically remove the invasive and they can compare different types of physical controls for removing the invasive. They could measure the abundance of native grass or the effectiveness of the different controls on the amount of the invasives that persist. So, questions. Here are a few possible questions they might use to guide their investigation. Note that each one of these addresses a factor that the researchers can manipulate and shows a relationship between either the measurable increase or abundance of desired native grass or the removal and reduction of the invasive. Here's one more just to think about. This is a kind of question you might see. How would you formulate a hypothesis and identify the variables and what is a field procedure you could use and some results you might expect? In your response, make sure you're addressing the original prompt. Watch out for statements that are too general and keep your answers specific. Make sure the data that you're measuring is quantifiable and that your results will show a relationship between the independent variables and what is being measured. Hopefully this has provided some clarification about what you can expect in an investigation design question for the exam. If you have any questions, be sure to send an email or a note to your teacher. And thank you for joining me today in our talk about science.